says over the rules for significant figures in addition and subtraction. In addition and subtraction, the answer cannot have more digits to the right of the decimal point than either of the original numbers. So take, for example, 89.453 plus 2.5. Since 2.5 only has one significant figure after the decimal point, you must round the answer 91.953 to 92.0. Similarly, 3.72 minus 2.9173, 3.72 has two significant figures after the decimal point, so the answer 0 0.8027 must be rounded off to 0 0.80. 0 0.80 has two significant figures. The rules for addition and subtraction make more sense when you apply them to the laboratory setting, because what the rules say is that you cannot have more digits in your answer than the least precise measurement that you make. So say you're in the lab and you're going to measure the volume of two liquids and one of your liquids is a, a lot of a huge amount and so you're going to use a graduated cylinder and this graduated cylinder only measures to the nearest milliliter in increments of 10, so 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So using the rules of significant figures Let's say that your, your liquid comes up to this mark here. And so, and so you would, you know for sure there's at least 50 milliliters, and you're going to guess 55 because the mark is right in between 50 and 60. So you get 55 milliliters. And then the other volume that you measure, it's a very small amount. And <clears throat> let's say that it comes to about right here and so so this one is an increment of one milliliter actually tenth of a milliliter you can get to the nearest tenth of a milliliter and then guess the 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 liquid in between so you can say two two point one two and it's right below the line so I'm going to I know for a fact there's two point two and I'm going to say it's right in the middle of the next one. So 2.25. This is the digit in your significant figure that you guess. 2.25 milliliters. Now if you're going to add those two together you get 55 milliliters plus 2.25 milliliters milliliter and that gives you 57.25 milliliter. But that would that is not the the measurement that you will record because it doesn't follow the rules for significant figures in addition to subtraction. You did it. You were clueless about the precision beyond the five here. And so it makes sense that you would not include these last two digits in your answer. So the correct measurement to record is 57 milliliters because the rules for significant figures say that your measurement can be no more precise than your least precise instrument. And our least precise instrument in this lab setting was the graduated cylinder to the left here. Here are a couple of problems to practice your skills on the rules for addition and subtraction with significant figures. So in this first example, we have 25.95 plus 2.9. So 2.9 is your least precise measurement and there's one digit past the decimal and so your correct answer better only have one digit past the decimal and so this one 28.85 has two so you can mark that one out 28.9 has one so that is a possible answer 29.0 29 and 30 so we can eliminate 29 and 30 because they have no digits past the decimal so which of these two choices, 28.9 and 29.0, is the most precise measurement using the rules of significant figures for addition and subtraction? And when you're using the rules for significant figures, you should use good rounding rules that you learned in math class. And so the most precise answer is 28.9, and that would be the correct answer. So, so let's try the second example, 25.95 plus 3. 3 is the least precise measurement. There are no numbers past the decimal, and so your answer should be an answer that has no digits past the decimal. So that eliminates 28.95, it eliminates 29.0, and you're left with 29 and 30. Using good rounding rules, your answer should be 29. 
I hope this has helped you understand the rule for significant figures with addition and subtraction. What I want to do now is to go over uh, how do you handle significant figures when you have multi-step calculations. What I want to do is talk to you about multi-step calculations because in physics you do a lot of multi-step calculations. So when do you use the rules for just significant figures and multi-step calculations? Only at the very end of the calculation. So let's try this practice problem. And in order to be successful at getting the correct number of significant figures to the nearest answer, you're going to have to do your calculations in the calculator all in one step. And I have a couple of tricks that I'm going to teach you guys. In shortly but those of you who do know how to do this whole calculation already on your calculator go ahead and put it in on your calculator and after you put it in which of these five choices would you think is correct using significant figures and so the way this is a multiplication and division and if you recall the rule for multiplication and division your answer should contain the number of sig figs and the least precise quantity given. And so if you look here, 0 0.0049, these are placeholders, so it has two sig digs, and I could write that in for you guys so we could practice that skill. So we have two sig digs. Right here, 20.0. This zero here is significant, and so that's three sig digs. 3.00, those zeros are significant, so three sig digs. 25 is two sig digs, 3.8 is two sig digs, and 4.00 is three sig digs. So our least precise quantities have two sig digs, and so our answer better only contain two sig digs. And so that leaves 0 0.77 and 0 0.78. And if you put this in in your calculator all in one step, your best answer using math rounding skills would be 0 0.77. I would guess that a lot of you, when you put that in on your calculator, you used parentheses and you took your time. I want to show you a quick method to put a long problem like that on your calculator. So I want you to go ahead and try this on your calculator. So just 0 0.0049, the times key, 20 times 3, no parentheses. You don't, you don't need any parentheses to do this method. And then you're dividing all that by 25. So the division symbol on your calculator, 25. And then you're just dividing all that again by 3.8. So another division symbol, 3.8. And then a division symbol. And for this one, you either have to convert 4 times 10 to the minus 3 to standard notation. Or you can use this little key on your calculator. It's a capital E and it stands for scientific notation. So you could write 4E minus 3. And if you do all that exactly the way I have it written here, you're going to get the correct answer without significant digits. And so your goal is to use correct significant digits. And so 0.77368421005 does round to 0.77 using the correct significant digits. And this method here saves you time and mistakes. Uh, it's over the parentheses method. <clears throat> it's also a good method to use if you don't have a scientific calculator. If you're using just a basic calculator, it's a, a, a quick method you can use to do all the calculations in one step. Uh, those of you who do have a graphics calculator, you have a function on your calculator that you may be unaware of. It's called an entry function. If you do end up making mistakes and you want to quickly edit your mistakes, you'll need to learn how to use the entry function. And I can show you guys how to do that individually uh, once you have your graphic calc. So this wraps up the R unit, our short unit on significant figures. I want to leave you with a question. Is it possible to get an exact measurement of an object's length? And the answer to that is no. It's impossible to ever make an exact measurement in science. Significant figures would have to go on forever out to infinity. And this applies not just to length, but anything that you measure in the real world, you're always going to be limited by your instrument. And 
the way that scientists have dealt with that limitation is to use significant figures in our measurements. Um, so we're going to be using uh, balance scales in here to measure mass. And so if a balance measures 25.00 grams, and that's what it shows you on the digital reading, then you should record 25.00 grams, not 25. Because if you recall, if you, re if you record 25 as your measurement, recall that this 5 here is your guess. This would be your estimated, and you're only sure that it's in the 20s and you're estimating the 5. By recording 25.00 grams, you're including four significant digits in your measurement, and you know that it's exactly 25.0, and you're guessing this zero here. So please, uh, be conscious of significant figures, and if you ever have a question in your laboratory wor work as to how many significant figures to record, you must ask. All lab work that you do in physics will be graded. Uh, based on your understanding of significant figures. So I will be looking for significant figures in your measurements and in your calculations. And on homework, you, you, I will be paying attention to significant figures, but not so tight on the rules. Uh, what I'll mainly be concerned about is, are you carrying your measurements out on your calculator? Say, for example, 20... If, if you put 20, so I'd never want to see a calculation where you extend the decimal way beyond what they should be. So 25.7869543, and maybe using the rules, you should have came up with 25.8. But if you were to put 25.79, rounding rules from math class, on your homework, I'd probably count that right. But in laboratory work, I am going to be looking for you following the rules very strictly. And I, I hope that you understand significant figures now. If you don't, I recommend you go back and watch the videos and please ask as many questions as you would like in class about this topic.